Apple's latest MacBook product line has launched with a controversial yet pretty popular feature, the touch bar. This is something that I want for my laptop use and something that I thought might be kind of cool to have on a desktop. Using some tools that I have already reviewed, I'm actually going to show you how to add this to your desktop for cheaper than what Apple would probably charge to give you a desktop version of the touch bar. Let's take a look. Plex is the media streaming app that beautifully organizes your media collections and lets you securely access them on all your screens. Now with live TV viewing and DVR. Click the link in the video description to learn more. I'm Vox here to make tech easier and more fun today taking a look at the Elgato Stream Deck, but this time we're doing it a little bit differently. I've covered it in a plethora of videos before on the channel, but this time I'm going to be putting a little twist on it. We're going to be using it essentially as a touch bar for the desktop. Now currently, I only have one of these set up, uh, but I have on good word from the Elgato team that they are working on making multiple instances of the Stream Deck hardware available to use at once. Currently, if you plug it in, you'll just have two of the same screens and no individual control, but they are working on being able to use two at once independently, at which point I will be able to mount my two up on different screen points and this will be even cooler. So I might do an update video again once we get to it. But I haven't talked about what I've been using the Stream Deck for or how my multi keyboard setup has been going lately. So I wanted to go ahead and cover that and also show you how you can essentially, as someone commented on my photo, turn it into a desktop touch bar. So let's check it out. All right, so what I have done here is I have taken my Elgano Stream Deck off of the stand that it usually comes with. It usually has this plastic stand base that it sits on and you can position it at a few different angles. I've taken it off that stand. I've turned it upside down because of the mounting angle that it has. And here, I can actually pull it off and show you. Because of the mounting angle here, if I had mounted it upside up like this, it would be pointing down at, it would be pointing down at the desk, which is not ideal. So what I've done is I have taken it, I have inverted it, and then I have used these, used these 3M command Velcro strips instead of the usual sticky strips. That way I can take it off, put it back on, and you know, it's it's adjustable. I've taken the Velcro strips, put one on my monitor, one on here, and then latch it into place there, readjust my monitor, and we're good to go. It's mounted on here quite nicely. Screens are still facing me pretty flat. Uh, if I could angle my monitor a bit better, I would actually have a bit better angle for the screens, but for the most part it works. And then what I had to do was go ahead and open up the Stream Deck software here. And basically, well, I didn't do this in the Stream Deck software, but in the software, you can customize the icons for each of your different buttons and your folders and things like that. So what I have done is I created a folder within my normal icons folder, which for me is C icons. I made an inverted folder and I just rotated all the icons that I normally use 180 degrees and they're inverted. Now I have heard that they are working on potentially uh, giving you an option to use the Stream Deck at multiple different angles. Therefore, it would automatically rotate the icons for you. But for now, this was my solution was I just I made copies of each of my icons and you don't even have to open a pro program. If you already have them as JPEGs or PNGs or whatever, you can just right click, rotate right or rotate left and you're good to go. So uh, here, I'll show you right now. Rotate right, rotate right. Now it's back up. Rotate right, rotate right, and, you, and then you just go in the Stream Deck software, double click, browse to find your icon, C, icon, inverted, audition. And if you don't know how to use the Elgato Stream Deck yet, I have multiple, multiple, multiple tutorials up on my channel. So this is a product that allows you to, it, it, basically it's a scene switcher for live streaming by default, but you can use it to control just about anything. They have options for hotkeys and hotkey toggles and things like that for literally anything you would ever want to control as well as interaction with Twitch, Twitter, and then OBS, game capture, and so on. But you can use it to control just normal things on your computer. And then you can you, you can loop in auto hotkey or something like that to then control other things. And so that is what this top row here actually does. If I click it, it's gonna pull up different instances of Explorer. Sometimes it pulls up the other program like it'll disable, well, it's not supposed to do that. Skype pulls up Skype over here on my other monitor. Not really going to show you that. Uh, OBS pulls up OBS, which I'm recording with. Notepad++ pulls that up. 
and Chrome pulls up Chrome and then cycles through Chrome tabs, which is pretty handy. To do that, I'm using some code from Taren from Linus Tech Tips, uh, and it's just called Program Switcher. And I have each of these icons here at the top set to the F13 through F24 keys. Now, if you didn't know, the American Windows keyboard or computer keyboard actually has an additional like two rows of F keys that just kind of got cut off on the standard keyboard. But if you've ever looked at an IBM Model M keyboard, it has all these, you know, function keys enabled. And if you have access to them, you can set that as a hotkey within the Stream Deck. So F13 here, F18, F14, 15, 16, and then these are standard things, which I will show you in a moment. So these are those keys. Now, the problem is, if you're going to set a hotkey within uh, within the Stream Deck software, you have to physically be able to input it because it intercepts the whatever you press on your keyboard before the system gets it, which means if I use a auto hotkey script to basically say P equals F13, it's still going to capture P because that is the actual physical key being pressed. And so I cannot use that way. So that put me in kind of a pickle of how am I going to activate the F13 through F14 or F24 keys without pulling in my IBM mod I do have an IBM Model M. I could plug in. It needs its own like table at this point. It's so big. But what I've done is I have another, a Genovation control pad, which is a manually programmed keypad. And basically I programmed it to set one of the keys to F13 and then, you know, onward to F24 and used it to set it that way. I don't know a different workflow that I can recommend for you uh, other than having something else you can program. Unfortunately, I've posted in our little support discord with them asking if they have a workaround to, to like manually select a key or something. Um, I don't know what that would be, but so that's it. So these activate the auto hotkey script to use the program switcher functionality to switch between this top row of programs here. File Explorer, Skype, OBS Studio, Notepad++, and Chrome. Then I have a folder for my OBS scenes and I haven't flipped these icons yet. Uh, this actually just screwed up my OBS recording. I don't actually have these flipped yet. I haven't fully set that up and by activating it, it actually just screwed up my OBS here as I'm in the middle of recording. So hopefully the file remains intact. Uh, I haven't flipped these yet, but these are all my different OBS scenes that I use when I'm live streaming on Twitch, which includes main webcam view, gameplay plus face cam, offline BRB, starting soon, things like that. I'm just basically going to flip these and reorder the rows and that will be good to go. Then I have these three shortcuts here, which are start recording with NVIDIA Shadow Play or GeForce Experience. Flashback recording with GeForce Experience, which just basically captures the past set amount of time that you select. I have mine set to a full uh, 20 minutes. I can use that on the desktop or in games. So I just have these handy hotkeys instead of hitting the alts, uh, which depending on what I'm doing or if I'm in game, that's actually a lot easier to hit. That one takes a screenshot through GeForce Experience. And then I have my Adobe Suite here. Now Lightroom, After Effects, Adobe Media Encoder, and Premiere are all just the launching shortcuts to switch to the program or launch them because I have my Premiere shortcuts on a separate control pad and nothing else do I really use shortcuts in at the moment. I will make the nested folders when needed. But Photoshop has a nested folder of a bunch of different shortcuts. Uh, activating the Nick collection filters, uh, color curves, levels, launching the program in the first place, blur, sharpen, auto tone contrast colors. And then what I've done is I have copy pasted. You can right click and hit copy and then right click and hit paste your different uh, your, your different hotkey entries. And so I've basically gone to my nested folders and paste those all at the top so that it's a consistent experience, whichever folder I am in, which is super handy. And then in Audition, I have, again, launching the program, split left, right audio tracks, because I record in stereo, but then split out mono track, uh, an EQ preset I use, compressor preset I use, noise removal preset I sometimes use, normalization, and then a mix down if I'm doing a multi-track edit. And so I have all these set up in one big layout. And like I said, those persistent icons at the top of program switching and launching, which makes this super freaking handy whenever I'm doing a lot of work and trying to stay productive. And since my, my hand is on my mouse at any given time, reaching up and touching that real quick is pretty intuitive, especially in the day of touch screens when you're used to looking up at your screens and touching them to interact with them, reaching up and saying, hey, I want to switch to Chrome. Hey, I want to switch to Notepad. Hey, I want to switch to Explorer. Hey, I want to switch to Explorer. And if I open up multiple instances of Explorer and go to different folders, 
then it will just switch between those different instances. And like I said, sometimes it loops in another program or whatever. It's a minor annoyance. And like uh, Discord is a Chromium. It's a Chromium. What is the E word? Electron. It's a Chromium Electron app. So it's actually using the Chromium web browser. It thinks that Discord is Chrome, which is a little annoying, but nothing I can fully avoid. So basically, I just have to make sure if I'm hitting Chrome that Chrome is pulled up here first. But I have this all super handy and it's basically, like I said, someone actually replied, which gave me this idea to go ahead and put a video up today. Uh, I recorded, I'm recording this on Friday, but it'll go up on Monday. Someone actually pointed out, hey, you uh, basically invented the touch bar for desktop. And now, of course, I'm not going to find the tweet, but it's pretty cool. And like I said, they're working on introducing the ability to use multiple stream decks at once. So you can set them up side by side or set them up on different monitors or have one like I can have one over at my streaming setup just for my streaming layouts and give me a full layout to work with and then a production layout, which would clear up this OBS folder and allow me to do different things there. A lot of potential here. And it's basically a touch bar for your desktop is you know, for 150 bucks is still cheaper than what Apple would charge for such a product. And it gives you probably more functionality, especially since Apple wouldn't actually give you a PC compatible touch bar in the first place. You may proceed. So there you have it of all the features that the Elgato Stream Deck can provide. It can also act as the PC version of the touch bar for your desktop. It can sort of work. I mean, it can work with a laptop too. It's obviously not going to stick on your laptop to, uh, <laughs> to be a touch bar like aesthetic your laptop won't close with it obvious things but i it's pretty awesome and no this video is not sponsored in any way shape or form by elgato they are not paying for this they have not paid me a dime for this uh, they uh, nothing like that they have sent me out the elgato stream deck for testing and review purposes quite a few months ago now and i've been using it non-stop ever since like i said i've posted a lot of other videos and i'm always looking for ways for to use it to improve my workflow and cut out at one point i had two keyboards and the macro keypad and the stream deck going always looking for ways to slim down so i have more space especially since i just implemented an 85 hertz crt monitor onto my desk that's eating up a lot of space now a couple concerns raised via twitter was concern of it pulling off or breaking off when i press on it because the velcro this is why i'm not using you can see the monitor bouncing this is why I'm not, not using normal Velcro. Normal Velcro would be, normal Velcro is kind of weak and iffy and it has some give to it. So if I was pushing on the buttons, it would probably flop off the monitor. I'm using 3M command strips because they're pretty rugged. I haven't secured it all the way after ripping it off at the start of the video, but I, I've been using it all day now and not a single hint of give of the actual Velcro coming undone. And yes, there is a little bit of monitor wobble going on that I'll either have to get used to or since I have them on a third party stand, just crank the tightness on the stand and it'll keep the monitor from wobbling too much and I'll be good to go. So nothing to worry about there. Like it doesn't matter if it bounces a little, like that happens anyway when I hit my desk a lot. Ideally, if all goes well, I might be swapping out the monitor in the first place soon. I'm trying to get my hands on a good 1440p, 144 hertz panel. So I'm hoping to swap out this monitor anyway. So I will just put a new command strip on the new monitor, rinse and repeat easy you can move it around you can set up different you know velcro strips on different places if you need to move it through your setup unfortunately the cable is not detachable you can of course you know it's a usb cable you can shop it rewire your own end and like extend it or something if you wanted to i'm not going to but this works for me and i'm so excited to get to we're up and running hope you enjoyed the video hope this made any sense to you Smash the like button if you did enjoy. Get subscribed for more awesome tech videos. Come check out our sponsor for this video, who's not Elgato. It is Plex, uh, king of the DVDs. Uh, pretty cool shirt they sent me out. I just got in today. Uh, Plex is an awesome media center service. Affiliate links in the description below. Product links for the Elgato Stream Deck. Amazon affiliate links in the description below. Go pick yourself up one. If you stream, do any sort of production where you need extra macros, this will save your life. Maybe, probably not. I don't know. I'm going to get going. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Epos Vox is a Patreon supported production. Our videos would simply not be possible without the support and generosity of our patrons, whom you can see on screen right now. If you'd like to join the inner circle and get early access to videos, among other things, go to patreon.com slash to learn more.